Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, happy Monday and happy Labor Day. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. Thank you so much. I hope everyone out there is having a good Labor Day. I know some of us are working on Labor Day, so if you are working, we feel ya. But also we want everyone who, we're thankful people are watching if you're up this Labor yes. Day and you have the day off. Thank you so much. And we are starting our day with a fantastic stat. In July, a research study found that 52% of young Americans live with either one or both of their parents. It's a new thing, and these are just for, um, and not just for students, but for people, for students. I'm going to try and sing. Young adults who are <laughs> out, of, out of college at this That's point. That's right. And so this is really amazing. The share of 18 to 29-year-olds living with their parents has become the majority. Yes, 52%. The majority. And it actually happened after the coronavirus, after the pandemic. But here's the thing. We're looking through all this research, it looks like it wasn't that far off, 52% now. But I think it was, yeah, right here, 48% of young adults live with their parents back in February. So it's not that too far of a, a distance. And here's the thing, this is the highest percentage that we've seen since the end of the Great Depression. And it says young adults have been particularly hit hard by this year's pandemic and economic downturn mm -hmm. and that have been more likely to move than other age groups. You know, and also the, the study doesn't really break down if it's the parents living with right. the young adults or the young adults living with the parents. What My, is my, my take on this is mm -hmm. I live with my parents for four years after I graduated. I think I was like 26 or 27 when I finally moved out. I loved living with my parents. Yeah. You know, um, it was, I saved a lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, I got to hang out with them all the time. There you go. See, they loved it. I had a lot of friends that lived with their parents when they graduated. Uh, I didn't. I couldn't move out fast enough. I love my parents, uh, but um, I graduated and moved to Nebraska from Pennsylvania originally, so got almost as far away as possible. Now I live in Texas. Still love you guys. Also, it's my mom's birthday, so happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday, Miss Massey. <laughs> but also, my brother just graduated college, and he right now, like so many of Americans who just graduated college or high school, can't find a job because it's really difficult out there. Yeah. So I understand this. So you're, you're not alone if you're living with your family. And, and you know what? This is a time that you can really just become super close as a family, too. Family matters. Let's take a look at the rundown. Doctors say this weekend will be critical to prevent a surge of infections this fall. Medical experts are pleading with people to wear their masks, and they say a vaccine is still months away. The global number of COVID-19 infections has now surpassed 27 million. The U.S. has the highest number of cases at almost 6.3 million. That's according to data released by Johns Hopkins University. More than 880,000 people have died from the coronavirus worldwide since the pandemic started. A new warning about so-called off-brand hand sanitizer. Kate Weiss of Austin, Texas, suffered burns over nearly 20% of her body after she used one of those sanitizers before lighting a candle. Hall of Fame baseball player Lou Brock has died at the age of 81. A family representative gave the news about his death. Demonstrations demanding police reform across this country. City officials in Rochester, New York, are announcing changes at their police department. Meanwhile, church volunteers, senior citizens, are hitting the streets, hoping to keep the peace. Washington Post reporting U.S. Postmaster General Louis DeJoy used to give bonuses to employees who made GOP contributions. In a congressional testimony just last month, DeJoy denied repaying executives to donating to the Trump campaign. The top Republican in the House is reportedly urging President Trump to stop criticizing mail-in ballots. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy tells the website Axios he warned the president that his criticism will hurt Republicans running for Congress and hurt the president himself. Grocery stores around the country are doing something they haven't had to do for months, drop prices. In March, April and May, sales were up on average by 32 percent. Chains have anticipated a drop in demand. Walmart is among those dropping its prices. Consumer experts say the biggest deals today are on mattresses. But if you're already getting a good night's sleep, there are big discounts from mall retailers like Gap, Abercrombie, and even Vineyard Vines. A British study says playing those games can actually improve your reading and writing skills and improve communication skills. Yeah, I was really excited about that story because a lot of people growing up were discouraged from playing video games because you're just staring at a screen all day long. Little did we know we would always be staring at screens. Screens, they never leave us. 
<laughs> All right, let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. How are we looking out there? 79 degrees. Yeah. Ooh. Warming so much up. nicer now. Warming up out there, and we're almost seeing completely sunny skies around downtown San Antonio. Uh, the aquifer has really benefited from the rain over the last few days. It's actually up a tenth of a foot over the past 24 hours now, uh, and the set, set 10 day average is, is going up steadily as well. So some good news there with the aquifer level. Pollen count a little iffy today. Mold is high. It's past 6,000, but it's down quite a bit from yesterday. Yesterday we were seeing mold count of 19,000, so that's some improvement there, although mold is still high. Pigweed and ragweed are low. I want to go ahead and I want to show you uh, uh, the temperatures outside right now. It's 79 degrees, mostly sunny skies, a little humid. It feels already like it's 82 degrees, and we have northwest winds at about 6 miles per hour. Happy Labor Day, everyone. I hope you get some time to relax from your labors. It's going to be 95 degrees in the afternoon. I did put a 10% chance for a stray storm, uh, mainly to our south today. Uh, but again, mass majority of us will miss out completely on the rain. South winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour today. And we have to talk about how we have a bit of a change in the forecast. We have a good chance for rain, but it's not looking like we're going to see a big impact from the cool front that a good portion of Texas is going to get this week. A lot, lot to talk about. I'll have your forecast in a bit. Sarah, Max. Thank you, Sarah. Well, let's take a look outside with TransGuide. I-10 at Callahan flowing pretty smoothly on this Labor Day Monday and I-10 at Frio. Traffic looking pretty good out there. Some top stories we are following today. We're still waiting to learn the name of the man killed during a shooting on the northwest side overnight. All this happening just after 1030 last night in an apartment complex on Cinnamon Creek Drive, not too far from Fredericksburg Road. Officers arrived. They found a victim in his late teens dead. Investigators are not quite sure what happened, but police have detained one person for questioning. And a woman could be facing charges after a three vehicle crash on the west side. Police have detained the woman for suspicion of driving while intoxicated. Officers tell us around 1:15 this morning, the woman crashed into a vehicle on Highway 90 near Suzette Avenue. That vehicle then crashed into another and then both cars rolled over. Police say one driver was taken to University Hospital with minor injuries. The other driver was not hurt. Today is Labor Day, which means many San Antonio City offices and services are closed. That includes the Central Library and all branch libraries. The city run COVID-19 testing locations at Freeman Coliseum, Cuellar Community Center and Ramirez Community Center. Also closed today, the COVID-19 hotline, the municipal court, pre-K for SA offices and metro health locations and clinics and city parks. Meanwhile, public safety and emergency services will remain in operation. Other city services that are open include recycling and garbage collection, so make sure you put out your bins today. The 311 Call Center, La Vida and Market Square shops are open, and city trails are open. For a complete list, go to ksat.com. And today is your last chance to get $5 off the registration fee for this year's Head for the Cure 5K. The race will look a little different this year because of the pandemic. It will be virtual, so you can run, walk, or bike a 5K in your neighborhood on September 26th and make sure to snap a selfie. Then join Head for the Cure on Facebook or YouTube and share your picture. To get $5 off, just use the code Labor Day in all caps before the end of today. We have a link to register and more info on the event right now. Just head to ksaccommunity.com. In your morning headlines, cell phone video shows the terrifying moment hikers try to flee the creek fire burning in California. That is an amazing video. Juliana Park, who took the video, says that her backpacking trip got cut short when her group of friends noticed ash starting to fall on them. The group then had to drive through the fire to evacuate. This video is showing flames all around them. Very terrifying. Authorities say the creek fire started Friday night and by Sunday morning, it burned about 45,000 acres of the Sierra National Forest. Over the weekend in California, the National Guard rescued more than 220 people who were trapped in the Mammoth Pool Reservoir Recreation Area. And newly released body cam footage showing Fresno police officers rushing to the rescue as a fire spread through an apartment building last October. Police beat firefighters to this burning building because of a 911 call reporting a domestic violence situation. Investigators say a man had stabbed the tires on his estranged wife's pickup truck and then threw a beer bottle through her passenger window. When officers arrived, the building was on fire. Video shows one officer leading people to safety, including a toddler that was handed to her through a broken window.
It is dramatic, and this is uh, stuff that they go through every day. They go in and not knowing what's going to happen that, that on their shift. And this is just an example of officers uh, doing their job, stepping up, and doing the right thing. The suspect facing charges of arson, domestic violence, and vandalism. Well, a military charger flight bursting into flames wow. just after takeoff in Hawaii that happened on Saturday night. Video from inside the plane shows a pitch black cabin and then a flash followed by flames outside the plane. Now from the ground, people could see what looked like a huge ball of fire. Authorities say there was a mechanical failure on one of the plane's engines. 212 people were on board. The plane able to make an emergency landing. Luckily, no one was hurt. And finally, this next story had deputies in Georgia saying, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> a Douglas County Sheriff's deputy was delivering <laughs> civil papers last week, and she left her cruiser's door open. When she came back to her car, she found a goat inside. Body cam footage shows the deputy trying to lure the goat out of the vehicle as it was eating paperwork left on the passenger seat. In a Facebook post, the sheriff's office says the goat eventually left, knocking the deputy to the ground. She was not hurt, luckily. The sheriff's office said the whole incident made them laugh and they wanted to share it with others. So you know, like the old excuse, the dog ate my homework? The goat. The goat ate the paperwork. Have you ever dealt with goats before? They are some of the most stubborn. Time out. How often are you dealing with goats? South Texas. Grew up, you know, covering a lot of goats. Livestock stories. Yeah. I there mean, I just grew up around it. Okay. And I grew up on a farm, but, you know, goats are a thing. There you go. <laughs> I know you have a dog. I didn't know you had a goat. 909, 79 degrees out. We'll still ahead on GMSA at 9. A group of mu musicians got together to create a remake of Queen's Bohemian Rap City. In the Klingon language, mm. oh my gosh, this pandemic. <laughs> we listen to the song in today's Music Monday. And it is the week we have all been waiting for football. The NFL is officially back this week. We have a preview of the Cowboys and the Texans games later in the newscast. The San Antonio man making it on the big screen. How religion influenced his directorial debut. Next, this is next on this week's What's Up South Texas. 913, welcome back. We'll stop the hatred. That's the message of one local filmmaker who, after spending thousands of dollars, directed his own movie for the big screen, which played right here in local theaters. Daniel Tucker says his film was influenced by the pros and cons of his religious experience. Jaffney Gray has his story in this week's What's Up South Texas. I had this image in my head and then uh, the mom of the actress actually p painted this and we put it onto a poster. After two and a half years, 29-year-old Daniel Tucker reached a new milestone, writing and directing his very own horror film. A creepy cult that moves into a small town. Things get progressively creepier and creepier and it erupts into violence. It's ultimately an examination of extreme um, hate, hatred. Horrible. Nothing but the blood has been shown in Santico's theaters and made its way to video on demand. Daniel says his film is meant to both entertain and start a conversation. Is there a way that you can respond to that kind of hatred? Is it solvable? How do we do that? And I often see people ex like respond to hatred with hatred, and I just hate that. So I'm just trying to say, hey, maybe it's not how it should, should be. Growing up, Daniel was fascinated with movies like Star Wars and Harry Potter. He loved everything happening in front of the camera, but more so respected the power behind the camera. After 10 years as a journalist. I got this itch of if they can do it, I can do it. Why can't I do it? So I did it. <laughs> Daniel says he also grew up in a very religious home, which also influenced the message behind his film. I saw a lot of bad interpretations of that, and it, it troubled me. I've lost friends to conversion camps or uh, other kinds of things like that. Uh, if you preach love but also preach a version of hate, I don't understand that and I can't. With his faith-based parents being his number one supporters of this project, Daniel follows their guidance despite their differences. He says it all boils down to loving each other no matter what. It's a lot of hate out there. It's not that hard to be kind. You have to go out of your way to be a hateful person. Daniel's passion to entertain while showing how much love is needed in this world is great action for What's Up South Texas. Everybody's on their own path. Make sure that you're true to yourself and that you're true to 
others, and if you can help them on their path, cool. But don't po point at their path, because they could easily point at your path, too. Jaffney Gray, KSAT 12 News. And Daniel credits the success of his film to his amazing cast and his amazing production team. He says he will continue with other projects, hoping one day filmmaking will be his full-time job. All right, amazing. And speaking of full-time jobs, we have a full-time meteorologist, <laughs> and she is presenting with a junior meteorologist? Yeah, junior meteorologist. So this is one of my favorite junior meteorologists so far. This is Little Miss Addison. She's five years old. She recorded this in August, and I love her energy. Hello, boys and girls. My name is Addison. We're going to talk about the weather. There's different kind of weathers, but today it's got to be sunny. And today it's got to be Friday. And no school tomorrow. And it's going to be August 28th. Bye. Thank you for watching the video. Awesome cute, job, cute, cute. Addison. I love how animated she was. Mm -hmm. I love how she pointed to the sun. Junior meteorologist right there. Good morning, boys and girls. <laughs> I loved it. It was awesome. And, and the sunrise this morning was absolutely beautiful as well. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous sunrise this morning. We're seeing temperatures start to warm up. From earlier, we saw morning low right around 73 degrees. Right now, it is 79. And just like Addison said, it is sunny. 79 degrees with just a little bit of humidity out there, and it already feels like it's in the low 80s. Showing you the satellite right now because there's a good portion of our KSAT 12 viewing area that's experiencing clear skies like Sisterdale, Canyon Lake, New Braunfels, and even the northern section of Bear County. Meanwhile, cloud cover for Uvalde, Hondo, Southern Bear County, Floresville, down to Pleasanton. It's generally in the 70s still this morning. Some areas like up in the Hill Country got down into the 60s. It's 77 in Bulverde, 78 JBSA Randolph, 76 in Castroville, and 74 in Hondo. Showing you the future cast for the day. What you'll notice is that there may be one or two pop-up showers or storms, but the rain chance is only 10% today. It's going to be a hot day. Otherwise, 95 degrees for the high temperature this afternoon. 90 up in the Hill Country in Kerrville and Rock Springs, close to 95 out toward Del Rio, Eagle Pass, and down to Laredo, and then out toward our coastal communities, low 90s for areas like Gonzalez and Hallettsville. 82 at 10, 87 at noon, 95 for that afternoon high. You can see there you go. I put that tiny little 10% chance. Well, partly cloudy skies in the afternoon. South winds today could be breezy at times, up to 15 miles per hour, and it'll be a really pleasant evening. So if you have Labor Day plans, like let's say a backyard barbecue, it's going to be pretty good barbecue and weather just a touch hot outside. Now, we got to talk about our national weather pattern. We've got some changes uh, that are going on. Now, over the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, it was looking like a cold front was going to be strong enough to make it to San Antonio. However, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I got to be honest, it's looking like that cold front is really going to struggle to get to San Antonio. Today, we've got a heat high over the southwest, the desert southwest. Temperatures are going to range anywhere from the triple digits all across Death Valley out to Phoenix, Arizona. Take a look out toward Colorado. Today, their high temperature will be in the 90s, but watch this. They've also got winter storm warnings right there because tomorrow their high temperatures will be in the 30s with snow all from this cold core of Canadian air that's going to spill over the Rocky Mountains. A low pressure system is going to develop. And earlier it was looking like over the weekend this low pressure system was going to quickly move across the United States. Now it's looking like it's going to stall. And so what does that mean for us? It means that slower front that may not make it to San Antonio, but it also means better rain chances for us. So you give and you take. Here's a look at the future cast for Wednesday. Cold across parts of the uh, panhandle of Texas, chilly for Lubbock and Amarillo. Meanwhile, it'll still be muggy for us here in San Antonio across Houston and Corpus Christi but those rain chances will tick up. And because those rain chances are going to be higher, our temperatures will be cooler. So uh, again, even though we're getting rain and not necessarily getting that cold, crisp fall air, we are getting cooler temperatures from the rain. Best rain chances are going to be Tuesday night, Wednesday, and then again on Thursday. So take a look at the planning forecast again. A drop in temperatures into the 80s, potentially in the upper 60s for the mornings as we round out the week as well. And so while we're not going to be seeing a cold front that's going to pack a punch, it is going to shake up our weather pattern. And hey, we'll take it. And again, we promise 
to not give you any hype and just the forecast as we see it. And this, these are the changes that we had to make here. Most importantly, Sarah, we're going to hopefully get that rain. I like that 70% chance. Especially for areas west. So Del Rio, Eagle Pass, you know, good chance for rain there where there's some drought. Chance every day. Yep. I just want a car wash. <laughs> Sorry, Max. <laughs> Time now, 921, 79 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. Listen up, Star Trek fans. There's a new tune that you're probably going to love. We listen to Bohemian Rhapsody in Klingon. Yes, that happened. That's next. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Labor Day. Labor Day today, but tomorrow is Star Trek Day. There you go, killing it over here. The director's telling me how to do this. Local right. Trekkie to my left, and what a better way to celebrate Star Trek Day than with an out-of-this-world Star Trek-themed cover of a song by Queen. And one and the hardest song possibly <laughs> to cover. CNN's Rick Demichella <laughs> beamed down this story for today's Music Monday. <laughs> To paraphrase Christopher Plummer in Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country, you've not heard Queen until you've heard it sung in the original Klingon. <laughs> Musician and Star Trek fan Rusty Mattias beamed aboard a group of like-minded musicians to create a Klingon language cover of Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody. I really love sci-fi, uh, all forms of it, and I love music, kind of all forms of it too, and I love giving myself musical challenges. And I, and I have access to a studio. And so I thought, and I have a Klingon dictionary. And I thought, what would be a really difficult and epic song to do in, in Klingon? And Bohemian Rhapsody came to mind right away. So I found a translation on Reddit that was still on an ongoing process. I didn't want it to hear what it sounded like. Uh, so we recorded it. When we were going through, we actually hired somebody. I put out a call on social media locally in Winnipeg here for anybody who spoke Klingon and immediately had to choose from like three different people. Rocking out in Klingon in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. I'm worried if they're conjugating their Klingon right. Very problematic here. <laughs> Okay, just go. <laughs> All right, well, here's another fun fact. In 2018, interview with CNN, the man who was hired to create the Klingon language said about 20 people in the world are proficient enough to hold an entire conversation. So you're here. What are the other 19 people doing? I don't speak Klingon. <laughs> Setting it, fun fact, I don't speak Klingon. <laughs> <laughs> Time now, 927, 79 degrees out. There's still a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. A new hard seltzer being mm. inspired by classic Mexican flavors, a growing jackpot for a Texas lottery, you need to get your ticket, and a local World War II veteran celebrating 99 years of life. Details on these stories trending on KSAT.com next. And it may be hot out, but an extreme athlete in Austria is taking the term cooling off to a new level, a new record that he broke, and how long he spent submerged in ice. We're going to explain. No, thank you. Well, this stunning moment the U.S. opened this weekend, a top tennis player in the world out of the tournament after an on-court outburst. The consequences he's now facing next. This has been a big talker all since yesterday. So a shocking moment at the U.S. Open. The number one player in the world thrown out of the tournament after hitting a line judge in the throat with a tennis ball. As ABC's Megan Tavrizian reports, Novak Djokovic now speaking out. A stunning moment at the U.S. Open. Game, Karen Yogusta. This morning, Novak Djokovic, the top tennis player in the world, out of the tournament after this on-court outburst. Djokovic smacking a ball out of frustration, accidentally hitting a line judge directly in the throat, leaving her gasping for air. Djokovic obviously stunned by the accident. He can be seen saying, I'm sorry, as he walks over to the collapsed woman. There was no question she was in a lot of pain. Minutes later, with medics by her side, officials determined the injury was too serious. The judge was out of the match. And despite his pleas for leniency, Djokovic was out of the open. Of course, he didn't do this on purpose. Nobody's suggesting that he did it on purpose. But he was in control of what he did. 
what he did was wrong and he has to pay the price. In a statement, the U.S. Tennis Association calling his actions dangerous or reckless with negligent disregard of the consequences. The USTA fining Djokovic $10,000 and stripping him of all ranking points he earned at the tournament. The rules are the rules. Djokovic, who was the favorite to win the tournament, apologizing Sunday night on social media, saying this whole situation has left me really sad and empty, adding, I need to go back within and work on my disappointment and turn this all into a lesson for my growth and evolution as a player and human being. Sunday's incident reminiscent of this moment from two years ago. Yeah, it when Serena Williams automatically lost a game and took it out of the frame. after arguing with an umpire about a coaching penalty in the U.S. Open Finals. You owe me an apology. I have never cheated in my life. I have a daughter and I stand what's right for her and I've never cheated. And now Djokovic is facing a possible second fine for skipping the mandatory press conference after the match. That's in addition to the quarter of a million dollars in prize money he was forced to forfeit. Megan Tavrizian, ABC News, San Diego. All right, from tennis to the Texans. You guys ready for football? Yeah. What, what? All right. Well, <laughs> you were more excited about the Klingon thing. Anyway, the NFL is officially back this week. Houston Texans kicking off the season against the Super Bowl champs, the Kansas City Chiefs, and, of course, Patrick Mahomes, the MVP. Former MVP. The first game scheduled for Thursday night, 720. Very excited about this. And you can't forget about the Dallas Cowboys. How could we forget about our Cowboys? Their season starting Sunday, 7:20. It's the night game taking on the LA Rams. New head coach, Mike McCarthy. Well, I'm just gonna throw it out here. On paper, the Cowboys look so good. Dak Prescott, CeeDee Lamb. Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, Zeke, good offensive line. You're starting to sound like a true South Texan. Oh, this so, is their year. This is their I'm year. not saying this is their year. <laughs> what I'm saying is on paper they look phenomenal. And shout out to the Texans signing Deshaun Watson for four years, $160 million. So he's locked in for the foreseeable future. I could talk about this all day, but you know what we should do I right now? I gotta say, Max, that was some shade you threw at Sarah. I'm used, to, <laughs> I'm used to the shade <laughs> now. I'm excited about the Klingon, the, the football. <laughs> I call it how I see it, Sarah. Oh, oh my goodness. Max Massey, what are we going to do with you? <laughs> All right, well, the aquifer it has responded well to rain over the last few days. It's actually up a tenth of a foot over the past 24 hours. Mold is high past 6,000, but it's down from yesterday when it was at 19,000. Pigweed and ragweed are low. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at temperatures outside right now. It is uh, 79 degrees at the airport, 80 in New Braunfels, 81 in Gonzales, 75 at in Del Rio and 76 in Uvalde. A little bit of cloud cover south of Highway 90 at the moment. But for your Labor Day, if you're planning on doing a backyard barbecue, it's going to be hot, 95 degrees. Maybe one or two pop-up showers out there in the afternoon, but our chance for rain today is only 10%. We have much better rain chances over the next few days. As early as tomorrow night, we could see some widespread rain on the radar, all because of a front that's going to move through Texas but not necessarily San Antonio. I'll be able to tell you all those details coming up in a bit. Take a look outside of Trans Guide. Traffic looking smooth on this Labor Day. I-35 in Bint Engelman. Really not a lot of traffic out there. 35 in Loop 410. Beautiful blue skies too. All right, top stories on KSAT.com this morning. A new hard seltzer joining the mix. We are on this like hard seltzer wave just taking over. This one though, a unique twist. Cool thing to do. Heineken is bringing in the Ganahia signature seltzer to the U.S. and select areas for a limited time. One of those being McAllen, not too far from here. Currently, people can purchase two flavors, which include mango, Picosito, a sweet mango drink with a hit of scent of spicy mm. chili. Oh, that sounds good. And limon pepino, which is a drink which infuses the taste of fresh citrus and cucumber. Interesting. And good news for all those Lotto fans out there. No one won one of the largest Lotto Texas jackpots from this past Saturday. That means you still have a chance to win roughly $39 million. Seems like a pretty good, good chance there. Well, Saturday's lotto was for an estimated $37.5 million, but because no one got all six numbers, it keeps going up. I'm so glad. I, I didn't buy a ticket. Now mm. I'm going to. You know, we read the numbers on Sunday morning, so I'm going to know by your reaction if you win. Oh, 
You'll know. <laughs> well, according to the Lotto website, 32 people did win over $1,600 each. I mean, I'd be excited for that after hitting five of the six numbers. Now the cash prize has gone up. The next drawing will be this <sighs> Wednesday. It is the largest jackpot prize for the lottery game since May 29, 2010. I was graduating from college then. Mm. And family and friends of a local veteran lining up their vehicles to celebrate the 99th birthday. Love this story. Carlos Camacho has lived a full life so far. He graduated from Sydney Lanier High School in 1939, worked at Kelly Air Force Base as an aircraft engineer repairman, and volunteered to join the U.S. Army back in 1942. He even married his high school sweetheart. Aww, and you can read more about this story, his story, his birthday, and all the ones we just told you about right now on KSAT.com. All right, switching gears here a little bit. I know this has become a big trend over the last few years, mm -hmm. like celebrity card grams. Oh, what is that website, the app where the celebrity? There's like a special app. I know my girlfriend used it for her mom. They they got, um, I don't know. It's like some... a, it was like a C-list celebrity. Yeah, exactly. And they. Yeah, cameo. cameo. They do the Thank cameo, you. and uh, it's like they record a selfie saying happy birthday and any message you want to do. I almost got it for my friends with athletes, but like some of the Cowboys, a little expensive. Just going to throw it out a there. A little pricey. But now a zoo, mm -hmm. in Tac it's Tacoma's Point Defiant Zoo and Aquarium. They have gotten the same idea where for $50 a pop, we'll create a personalized video message from an animal of your choice. So from an armadillo to a penguin. Wow. All right. So, throwing it out here, if you could have any of these animals do like a birthday greeting card for you, which one would you have? Okay, I think it would definitely be this walrus. <laughs> it is so cute. Can we have audio of that? Uh, Hi, Stephanie, this is Amanda and Pop here at Point Defiant Zoo and Aquarium. Your friend Tessa wanted to reach out and say she misses you a lot and she hopes you're staying healthy. We hope this brightens your day. Watch the wave, watch the wave. Oh, yes. <laughs> so cute! I think your sound effects were better than the actual oh, I animal. Didn't, I didn't know that Walrus didn't make that. It, it's just, I mean, I'm such an, I just melt with animal yeah. videos. So these are, these are so good. <laughs> Sarah Spivey, what about you? If you had any animal that could wish you a happy birthday with a card, what would it be? Um, I choose uh, Sarah Costa the person because <laughs> impression of that walrus there. <laughs> that was pretty good. Fantastic. I'm going to go with Penguin. Love penguins. They're always wearing tuxes. Oh, of course. <laughs> all, about, all about being dapper. You got to dress up. It is what it is. 929, 939, 79 degrees out. You're watching GMSA at 9. A grandfather and grandson didn't let 2020 stop them from living out their dreams. And next on GMSA at 9, the incredible project that brought them closer together. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Labor Day. Some good news to start off this block. 83-year-old Fred Silverblatt lives his life on the edge. He is still a practicing doctor and a triathlete. Silverblatt's grandson, 20-year-old Elliot Ryan, has always wanted to build his own roller coaster with his grandfather. Now that he's home from college because of the pandemic, he made that dream come true. And his grandfather was the first person to try it out. It was very exciting, probably more exciting than I anticipated. It was crazy. I was a little nervous. I knew it was going to be fun for him and fun for everyone to watch him do it. Elliot worked almost every day in April until August using wood nails and a slide he got from his grandpa when he was only two years old. Elliot says he's grateful for his grandfather's guiding encouragement, helping push his project to perfection. They already have plans to make the roller coaster even bigger next summer. That's awesome. Also, shout out to his grandfather, who's a triathlete at 80 plus years old. I know. Impressive. All right. Speaking of athletes, an Australian extreme athlete finding a unique way to stay cool this summer, spending time submerged in ice. Talk about an ice bath. The town of Melk, Austri Austria, watched as Josef Kuberl, I hope I said his name right, spent two hours, 30 minutes, and 57 seconds inside a custom-made cabinet filled with ice cubes, breaking the record he set last year by over 20 minutes. Huh. Afterwards, he said he was very happy to feel the sun on his back as he ate some ice cream and posed for pictures. I, I got it. I, I mean, his that. joints must feel good after yeah. an ice bath. I always felt like super good. Ready to go. It's not fun. Well, Sarah Spivey, what do you have to add to this? <laughs> Me and Sarah Costa are freezing in the studio. All, at all times. I mean. At all times. I like to keep it under 70. It keeps us awake. It's happy, and then... It's like Ooh, we're like... Nah. Sarah Costa rolls in here with a fleece on. <laughs> it's just ready. And I, I can always about get Sarah on my side. Hey, can we turn it's it It's cold, right? And I'm just it's like... Cold, right? Just turn it off. It's fine.
I get outnumbered. You got here. a you got a sports coat on. So yeah, it's true. You don't get an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is a wonderful start to Labor Day. We are seeing really sunny skies out there right now, at least for a good portion of the KSAT 12 viewing area. Clouds elsewhere. I'll show you the satellite in a bit. Right now it is 79 degrees outside. We do have a little humidity. And here's that satellite that I was talking about. You can really clearly see that generally south of Highway 90, there are some clouds north of Highway 90. It's sunny, completely sunny out in Kerrville, Sisterdale, Canyon Lake, Bernie, Leon Springs, Seguin. Uh, but a wide view here and you can see those clouds in Frio County near Pearsall uh, and also out toward Eagle Pass. Some clouds this morning as well toward Laredo and Catula. Uh, but those clouds are going to start to dissipate and just about all of us will have partly cloudy skies in the afternoon. It's, it's uh, 79 like I said in San Antonio, but it's 80 in Pleasanton. 82 in Gonzales, 75 in Del Rio, 77 in Uvalde, 73 in Carrizo Springs and 76 in Catula. Future cast shows it's going to be a pretty dry day. There may be one or two pop up showers, uh, but generally they will be east of San Antonio. We'll go only about a 10% chance around San Antonio for one of those pop up showers or storms. It's going to be great day for uh, great weather for Labor Day itself. If you want to go enjoy some time by the pool or perhaps with your family at a backyard barbecue, the weather's going to permit that. In fact, it'll be warm and hot in the afternoon with high temperature right around 90 in the higher elevations. So Temperwood Park, Verde, Bernie, Leon Springs, but closer to the mid 90s around the metro area. Uh, 90 for the high in San Antonio will be gradually warming up here 87 at noon uh, and then again like I said just to 10% chance south winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour so there will be a bit of a breeze and then it'll be really pleasant in the evening hours although a little muggy as the sun sets and temperatures fall into the 80s I want to talk about the week ahead the rest of the week uh, will be warm here today and even potentially tomorrow but our weather pattern is going to shift. Meteorologists all around the nation are uh, really impressed with how strong this cold front will be for a good chunk of the nation. In fact, parts of Colorado could see about a foot and a half of snow, and they're dealing with 90s today. So really impressive, strong, strong cold core of air. But it's looking like it's not going to be moving through San Antonio as much as we thought earlier on the weekend. So I want to show you the one thing that we're fairly confident about, which is the rain. These kinds of, of systems, these fronts, really do a great job of stirring up some rainfall. And so we've got a good chance for rain starting tomorrow night through Wednesday and then again on Thursday. Our best chance being Wednesday about 70%, Thursday about 40%. And then we'll have to wait and see just how far east this front can be uh, and can get. But what we do know is that one half of the state will be chilly and dry and the other half of the state will still be muggy but cooler from rain cooled air. And guess what? San Antonio, we're smack dab right in the middle of that. And so we'll wait and see how far east this front can get. If this front can get further east, we're talking mornings closer to 60 degrees. If it kind of falls apart over San Antonio, then we're talking mornings uh, closer to 70 degrees. Either way, with the rain uh, potential, we're going to see afternoon highs limited into the 80s, both on Wednesday and Thursday. So we're confident about that. It may not be the front that we wanted with the cool, crisp, fall-like feel, but it is going to be something that's going to provide some healthy rainfall, especially for our friends out to the west. Del Rio Eagle Pass, dealing with some drought, they could potentially see maybe up to three inches of rain when all is said and done around San Antonio. Antonio maximum rainfall of about an inch through Friday. So again, welcome change there on the forecast. We will be refining this. Please stay up to date with us and we will be right back. A new state of emergency in Southern California after a wildfire exploded to more than 70,000 acres in just days. And forecasters warn high winds in many areas today could make the firefight even more challenging. An uptick in both COVID-19 cases and deaths. Health officials announcing 228 new cases and 85 new deaths, some of which were backlogged. That brings our all-time case total now to 47,543 and our death toll at 978. Labor Day in a pandemic should look a lot different this year, but new images of packed beaches from New Jersey to California and crowded bars in Florida and Tennessee, fueling fears about the holiday potentially sparking a surge in COVID-19 cases. Now is not the time to let up. 
President Trump heading into a busy campaign week, trying to move on from that Atlantic Magazine report alleging he denigrated American war dead as losers and suckers. The president has staunchly denied the report and will be taking his law and order message on the road. The Navajo Nation is joining calls for accountability at Fort Hood after one of its members became the latest in a long line of soldiers to die at the post just this year. His death marks the 28th from the post since the beginning of this year. The extradition hearing for WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange resumes today. Assange is fighting to avoid extradition to the United States. He's wanted on 18 criminal counts over a leak of secret U.S. documents. In less than three months, there have been close to 8,000 Black Lives Matter protests around the country. And a new report from the U.S. Crisis Monitor says 93% of them involved peaceful protesters. As Mulan finally arrives, calls for a boycott have resumed. Last year, the film's star, Chinese-American actress Liu Yifei, voiced support for Hong Kong police, who have been criticized for cracking down on protesters there. Calls to boycott Mulan quickly followed and have spread to pro-democracy movements in Thailand and Taiwan. Apple reportedly has plans to announce new iPad and Apple Watch models this week. A press release may come as early as tomorrow. The exact products aren't known, but reports say filings in Europe indicate at least two different iPads and new Apple Watches will be released soon. See, Apple's so smart, they just keep developing more stuff, so you have to buy it. You have to update it. Ugh, so annoyed by that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so have you, have you watched, you know, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? Yes, of everyone's course. read the books, everyone's seen the movies. And so this is kind of like a real-life Willy Wonka situation. Mm-hmm. Go on. Okay, so the man who created Jelly Belly, Jelly Beans, is offering to give away thousands of dollars in one of his candy factories through a series of treasure hunts. All right, so it's kind of like that golden ticket style. Remember in the movie where you look for the golden ticket? Uh, this, though, is going to be a necklace in places around the United States. So he, you can hold a treasure hunt in each state and tickets to join the hunt and receive crucial hints cost about $50. While the golden ticket won't be packaged inside a candy wrapper, everyone who enters will receive a pack of CBD infused jelly beans. Hmm. You know, so each hunt limited to a thousand people. I'm just gonna throw it out here. You guys big jelly jelly fans? Jelly yes. bean fans? I, I love, love it. I yeah. love that buttered popcorn one. Mm. That's one of, one of my faves. The yeah. flavor. What's your go-to? You know, anything like cherry, strawberry. All right. Well, we're going to end the show on that note. <laughs> Only about 10 seconds left. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Happy Labor Day. Happy Monday. We'll see you back here at News at Noon.